Welcome to Electron Line. When working with a series, you sometimes find very interesting results. Here we have a second example where we expect the series to converge and we're trying to find the limit as n approaches infinity. So in other words, when we sum up all the terms, what do we get? And here we have s sub n is equal to the infinite sum from n equals 2 to infinity. Here we have to start at 2 because it is of 1 divided by n times n minus 1. If we let n equals 1 and 1 minus 1 becomes 0, and of course we have an undefined term which we can't have. That's why we'd start with n equals 2. So what does that look like? Well, again, what we're going to do is we're going to write it as a sum of partial fractions. And to do that, let's use our technique. We can say that 1 divided by n times n minus 1 can be written as a over n plus b over n minus 1 which means when we cross multiply that we get here we get a times n minus 1 plus b times n divided by n times n minus 1 should equal the original fraction which is 1 over n times n minus 1 which then means since the denominators are the same that a times n plus b times n must equal 0 because there's no n term over here and minus a must equal 1 which means based upon this that a plus b is equal to 0 and of course I can get rid of the n's I don't have to put the n's there so a plus b equals 0 which means that a equals negative b and over here, I can say that a is equal to negative 1, which means that b must equal 1. In other words, I can rewrite this function as a, which is negative 1 over n, plus b, which is 1 over n minus 1. So that's the partial fraction representation of this sum. So this can be written as the infinite sum from n equals 2 to infinity of minus 1 over n plus 1 over n minus 1. So now we can start plugging in the various values that we get, starting with n equals 2. So this becomes equal to minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then we add that to the next term, which when n equals 3, we get minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 2. And then we add the next term, which is minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3, and so forth. Again, when we look at it, it looks a little bit different, but you can see that we have a negative 1 half here, and we have a positive 1 half. They cancel out. And we have a negative 1 third and a positive 1 third, which cancel out. And then if you imagine the next term, which would be 1 over minus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 4, Plus, so you have a negative one fourth and a positive one fourth, and here you begin to see the pattern again. The only thing that will remain is the one over one, and the very last term as you go to infinity, which will be minus one over infinity. So in the limit, as n approaches infinity of the infinite series S sub n, this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum starting at 2 and going to infinity of minus 1 over n plus 1 over n minus 1 which in the limit as n goes to infinity will end up with just 1 minus 1 divided by infinity and of course minus 1 over infinity is 0 so this becomes 1 minus 0 or simply 1 and again, just like what we saw in the previous video, by using the same technique with something that looks quite different, instead of having 1 over n times n plus 1, we have 1 over n times n minus 1. But starting at n equals 2, because we cannot start at n equals 1, we end up with the same infinite series and the same end result. So very strange things will be, will be waiting for you when you start working with series but after a while, when you see all the various techniques that we use to find the summation and to find the last term of an infinite series, you'll see that it's not so bad. And that's how we do it.